Welcome back, everyone. We are nearly a quarter way through the new year. If you're feeling like you're falling behind on those New Year's resolutions to better balance it all, well, we got you, and we feel you. With looming pressures to be a great employee, mother, wife, friend, mentor, etc. now, with this coronavirus we're dealing with, it may be time to hit reset and get back afloat. Joining me now with tips on how to bring back balance into our lives is psychiatrist and author and our dear friend, Suvrat Bhargave, a.k.a. Dr. B. He lets me call Thank you, Dr. B. Thank you. B, I'm so happy you're here. Um, and obviously, this segment was planned before. Yeah. You know, we've really now been dealing with this crisis the way it has evolved just in the last few days. Right. Um, so, no matter what, we have people at home. Maybe this isn't because of New Year's resolutions necessarily, mm -hmm. but you are just stressed, and mm -hmm. maybe you're going to take this time at home to get back in balance. And mm -hmm. that is why you're here, which I love it. Okay, let's say, or do you feel like it's safe to say that off balance, being off balance, takes a toll? in every aspect of your life. Definitely, I mean, let's start off saying this. It's easy to get off balance right now, right? We have technology that uh, makes us accessible at all times. Uh, we have roles that we play that are multiple. We are working people, we are parents, we are trying to volunteer, you're trying to have a social life. Um, there's so many ways for your life to get off balance. So it is very easy to get off balance. If you, if you figuratively sort of think of being off balance as physically walking yeah. around the world like this, right. um, it's going to take a toll, right? So in the very same way, if you are off balance, it's going to take a toll on your physical well-being, yeah. your emotional well-being, your relationships, uh, even your work performance. Oh, absolutely. All right, so the good news is we have tips for finding balance. The first one is, and we've talked about this on the Real Talk table, letting go of perfectionism. This I let that go a couple... A couple of decades ago, no, honestly. <laughs> You're ahead of the game. I'm trying to be ahead of the this game. This is a tough one. I mean, for a lot of people, this is a tough one. And, and the truth is a lot of really successful people are hardworking and they're driven, right? But the other side of that is they tend to be a little perfectionistic. They tend to be a little self-critical. Uh, and, and I'm even going to say they tend to be a little controlling. And what I mean by controlling is trying to control factors that are not in your control right. or thinking you haven't done enough until you get the result that you yes. really want, right? So what I would ask our viewers to do is something that I do when I think I'm spinning my wheels, and that is take a step back, yes. take a deep breath, and ask yourself, are you trying to do 100% or are you really trying to do 110%? 110% means are you trying to control things that are not in your control or... Are you, despite your best effort, not ready to give up just yet? Yeah. Uh, and, and if you're doing 110%, then you're really spinning your wheels. And, and if you're doing your best, great news is most of the time it's going to work out the way you want. If it doesn't, give yourself more credit. You will yes. figure it out uh, because perfectionism is an unattainable goal. And the really great news is it's unnecessary. Yes. Unnecessary. Give yourself the grace uh, yes, to say right if you're not doing it all or you feel like you're not doing it all, you know, well and to the level that you want to. Just right. give yourself some grace, especially these days. That's right. Okay. Unplug. I'm thinking in these next two weeks, many of us might be doing more of this, or mm -hmm. unfortunately, we may be, may be we, the opposite. Maybe the opposite. Mm -hmm. I want everyone out there to think about what we can do to better our lives and our family lives with this time that we now are, are being forced to have with yeah. our families. I mean, I for one had two, by the way, events canceled, charity events, mm -hmm. you know, this weekend. So I suddenly have a, a, a lot of time. All of us do. Well, and, and think of this as an opportunity, right? Let's just reset. Let's yes. figure out what our relationship with technology is going to be. The great news is technology allows many of us to telecommute or telework at a time like this. Uh, technology helps us to be more efficient, perhaps, in the work that we do. Uh, but the downside of technology is technology has created this um, really unrealistic expectation that we're still supposed to be accessible at all, all the, time. the time. Yeah, all the time. And what I'm saying is it is right, it is healthy, it is the, the correct thing to do to sometimes be off the grid. Right. Uh, turn things off, simply be present. And so what I tell people is practice it. Uh, if you're going for a walk, simply go for a walk. Yes. If you're going to watch TV, simply watch TV. You really got to train your brain what it means to be on one thing at a time yes, because we've kind of trained it the other way. Exactly. Right Let's leave our our phones outside the you know outside the room. If you're watching TV in the family room with your family, nobody. That's right. We should have the tray or you know a That's bowl. Right. Everybody Drop leave your phones. Drop it in the bowl. Drop it in the bowl. Right. And, uh, and, and you got to maintain your own. Yes. Rule though, right? If you right. if you make that rule, then you've got to maintain it. Because if you don't maintain your boundary, other people will take advantage of it. Totally. Yeah. All right. This next one, I've I've worked on. I've let it go a little bit as of late. Uh, take time to balance mind, body, and spirit. Those people who practice, and I know this isn't just about meditation, right. but those people, men and women, men if you're watching, men do it too, yeah. who practice mindful meditation, yeah. say it gives them so much in terms of how they handle what we're going through right now, the trials of life. 
Yeah, so again, what, what, what I'm trying to say is when we think about everyone else's needs before our own, something's going to give. Yeah. Uh, when we finally do think of our own, our own needs, we tend to think about the things that we have to do, right? You have to take a shower, you got to eat, you got to go to the bathroom. Uh, what I'm saying <laughs> is let's also look at the other needs as well and let's protect them, think of them as crucial too. So right. you mentioned one, and for some people meditation is a crucial need and they have to really make that a non-negotiable. Exercise for all, all of us should be a non-negotiable crucial need. Yes. That doesn't mean you got to go to the gym. It just means you have to know that you Get have moving. to devote some time to, to your activity yes. level. Exercise is not only good for physical fitness, it helps you be emotionally well as well. So whether it's exercise, meditation, yoga, reading scripture or therapy, Block it off and protect here, it. Yes. Yeah, protect it. Protect it. All right, protect only it. time for this last one, and we'll post this entire list. Yeah. Um, number four, limit time-wasting activities and people. That will be easier to do in the next two weeks, <laughs> for, at least for the people part of it. You're right. like, oh, got to, can't do that. Got to right. stay home. So you and I have touched on this a little bit, too. I mean, really what this is is you're taking an inventory of the people and the activities in your life that bring you meaning and bring you value. Right. And then once you have that list, the rest of it is like trimming the fat. Right, you gotta take out the activities and the people in your life that maybe don't bring you the same amount of meaning and that. value, right? So something you and I have talked about before, it's hard to do, but don't say yes to everything. Right. Don't accept every invitation. Oh. And if you're someone who gets on social media, uh, but you find yourself doing it three times a day, and each time you do, you're, you're on the phone for an hour, maybe you only yeah. do it once a day, maybe you do it when you're having your morning coffee, and when your coffee's done, so is your social media Well, time. you just gave me permission to tell Trent. I'm not posting no, every Trent, minute. No. Trent, just kidding. <laughs> he's, he's on us. He is he's on a great, us. great social media I always manager. say yes to Trent. We love you. I, exactly. I yes do. to Trent. Yes. All right. Thank you, thank so, you so, very so much. much. We're going to stick around. I'm going to be around. Real talk. I love it. Real talk.